Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. Today, we have got a really exciting video looking at an iconic Warhammer 40K character, Commander Dante of the Blood Angels. If you've been following my Space Marine Army project videos, you'll know that one of the eight Space Marine chapters I'm painting up for that are the Blood Angels. And I'm painting them in a very specific style, and that is more of a grimdark style of armor. It's chipped, some of the ceramite metal is showing through underneath the paint, kind of a little bit grimy. Now I've not gone all the way and they're not splashed in blood and caked in mud and it just uh, extremely visceral, but they do have a little bit more of that grim dark feel. So I was presented with a unique challenge of how do I paint Commander Dante in all of his glorious, wonderful, golden beauty while keeping it within the grimdark theme. I spent a lot of time bouncing this around in my head, trying to figure out what exactly it would look like, practicing some different things, working on some different, I don't know, techniques or schemes or just ways in which I can make this work to kind of balance out. We want him to have that classic golden feel of Commander Dante, but then I wanted to have a grim dark feel. And I didn't want to just make him feel really grimy and rusted and, and beaten down. I want a little bit of that glory and that shine to show through, but then dialing it back a little bit of grit and a little bit of grime. And I can definitely say that I'm happy with the middle ground that we were able to find in the scheme that we're about to show you. Before we jump into looking at the paint job though, I want to take a minute to talk about a couple of important things technique wise that I really focused on while doing this. There's two really big things that I was going for with this paint job. Number one is using light brush strokes. Now, it's hard to tell through a camera. It's hard when you're not learning in person, but you're watching videos to really understand the pressure that someone is applying when they're painting with a brush. You don't get a good feel for it. You're not able to, to be there in that moment. But a lot of what I'm painting with this model are very light touches. My strokes are not really full strokes. They're not heavy handed, but we're being really light. And so one of the things that maybe you don't pay a lot of attention to is the pressure you're applying with your strokes. Are you pushing down with the brush or are you just lightly coming over it and touching it? Depending on what you're painting and how you're painting, you want to be able to vary the pressure or the heaviness or lightness of your brush strokes. If that's something that maybe you've not thought about before, well, it's a good idea to start practicing it. It takes time getting used to it. If you're used to pushing down your brush, if you're used to using the edge of your brush a lot, that's kind of the background I came from, is using the edge of my brush, applying the same pressure all of the time, being very heavy handed with my painting. And that's not always a bad thing, but you definitely wanna to learn to use a lighter touch. The second thing is how much paint I'm loading onto my brush. Especially once I get to the layer steps, once I'm out of the base coating and then I put that oil wash on top of it, once I'm building up those highlights, I'm really, I'm taking a vast majority of the paint off of my brush. I use my thumb and really my non-painting hand thumb is pretty much 24 seven covered in paint because I load up my brush with paint and then I will wipe it off on my thumb until I'm happy with the amount that I have left. And with this, a lot of it was done with very little paint left on my brush, enough to be able to work with. I didn't dry out my brushes by wiping it and wiping it and wiping it, but I made sure that my brushes had a very small load of paint on them. One of the things this does is it helps to build up smoothness. I was working with a lot of metallics with his armor. So one of the things with metallics is they can be kind of gritty and leave a, a weird texture to it that is, it doesn't look good. I don't think it looks good. So being very light handed with it and slowly building up those brush strokes, slowly building up that paint with a light touch, but also only using a small amount of paint on the brush really helped 
to blend it up and to create the, the atmosphere and the transitions that I was looking for with this model. So two of the things that I really be thinking about as you're watching is the lightness of my brush strokes and how different the painting would look if I really loaded up my brush. If I had a lot of paint on my brushes, uh, you're gonna see a lot of things in the video where it almost doesn't look like I'm putting down paint because I'm using light touches and I'm using a light amount of, of paint, a small amount of paint in the brush itself. So it takes a lot of strokes. It takes a lot of layers to build it up, but it makes it smoother and it makes it easier for me to control how those highlights are going to act. So we've got our two things in mind for what we kind of want to be looking at, really what I was focused on while I was painting this. With those things in mind, hopefully you're ready to jump into what I think was a fantastically fun paint job. Let's go ahead and jump to painting Grimdark Commander Dante. I decided to do things a little bit different than I have in the past. And instead of using a typical gold paint, which I would use to paint gold, I was highly inspired by the great Trovarian and some of his grimdark videos. And in one of them, he talks about not liking to use a lot of gold paints and showed a different method for kind of how he does gold in a nice, easy way. And although I do like to use gold paints, I thought this would be a fun opportunity to try something different and to paint gold in a way that I haven't done it before. So we start by using our dark aluminum to create this nice base over our black primer. I then come in with a silver, which is a much brighter color and spray that from above about a 45 degree angle to just brighten up the tops of the armor. This can obviously be done with brushes. You could be doing it with rattle cans. I prefer airbrush as it speeds up the process and gives me some more control, but that's totally optional. To actually create our golden armor, we use this mix of an ink and then our Cassandora yellow from Citadel. Now it's a pretty watered down color, so we're going to slowly build this up. It takes multiple coats, letting each coat dry in between. And the plus to having this in sub-assembly is we can really paint one part, set it aside, move on to the next one, and hopefully by the time we're done with the last one, the first one is dry took probably three coats in total to get it to where I wanted it to be. But once we got it there, I was very happy. And here in just a sec, you'll see what that looks like. We're now just gonna move on to base painting and really filling out all the other pieces on the Commander Dante model as a whole. As always, I feel like I say this in every single video, we're gonna use rather thin layers of paint. It's not gonna go on very opaque and that's totally fine. It's gonna take two or three layers to build it up to a place that we're okay with and that's the expectation. So we're marking out all of our black areas I will say I found that painting over this gold, faux gold, whatever you want to refer to it as, that first layer that I would paint over really didn't look good. Like it looked thinner than usual. A lot of that gold shone through and I was concerned how long it was going to take me to get it opaque. But then the second layer that I applied would be far more opaque than I would have really expected. So I don't know what it was with this, but once again, thin layers. If we make a mistake over this gold armor, like you see me do right there, go ahead, wash your brush off, take a damp brush, take a wet brush, wipe it off, clean it off immediately. 
We can't really go back and very easily fix mistakes on the golden armor, so we have to be very careful when painting around it that we don't make a whole lot of mistakes. I also talk about this pretty much every time that I make a video in which I use these air colors by Vallejo, the air metallics. And I absolutely love them. I love using them with a brush. They're my go-to metallics. But you also have to be aware that they're very, very runny because they are airbrush paints. So make sure that you only use a small amount on your brush. Their coverage is phenomenal. You don't need a ton of them. They're very smooth. They're very powerful paints. They have great coverage, great color. But if you really load up your brush, they're going to run and almost act like a quasi wash and really flood your models. So be careful of that. When painting these large surfaces that are smooth, like his pauldron here that we're painting, we need to be careful because it's easy to create streaking and it doesn't look good on these flat surfaces or these large smooth surfaces. So make sure that your paints thin down because if it's really thick, automatically brush strokes will show up. But the other thing is make sure that in between your first layer and your second layer or your second and your third, however many it takes, make sure you let them dry completely. I think that's the number one mistake that most inexperienced painters, especially, but even experienced painters, you run out of patience and you're just, you want it done and you don't wait for the paint to dry. 
and that creates streaking and it can ruin a lot of the time that you've put into it. Use thin coats, let them dry. We're gonna use this gray color, and it's one of my favorite gray colors. I really like this, this color. It's got good coverage. It's nice and bright, just really fun to work with. But we're gonna use this on all of our wing motifs and everything, whether it's the chest, the ax, the shoulders, the ankles are all over the place on this model. Make sure you don't miss the ones that are on the backpack as well. I did at first and had to come back and make sure I got those ones. But we're using it for all of these different wings. Also, we're gonna be using it on all of our parchment. This just lays down a good layer for us. Our oil wash that we're gonna use later on is going to shift the color of each and the way that we apply the oil wash on them is going to change them. And then we're gonna highlight them up with different colors. So our wings and our parchments won't end the same, but they start from the same base of this bright neutral gray. So I do oil washes a little bit different than most people that I've seen, which means I'm probably doing them wrong and there's a lot of other people out there who have the right way of doing it. But let me explain my way of doing it to you. I normally don't use one color for the wash. I like to have multiple. So in this, I'm combining my burnt umber with my black. I want the brown to shade the golden armor but I want the black to give it a little bit more depth and to really, in those recesses, dig in and give it some deep shading there. But I just simply, I water it down with a lot of mineral spirits and apply it as I would a wash. But then I use two different methods to moving or cleaning up this wash on the model. I use a Q-tip as you see there and I'll just brush it off, I'll wipe it off areas. Sometimes it'll be a little bit damp with mineral spirits and uh, that helps it not uh, get some of that cotton off. It's just a little bit easier to work with. But especially when it came to things like the wings that you see, I used got out a lot of the oil wash off of that because I want them shaded and I want that color shifting a little bit but I still wanted them reading as white-ish, right? So I really wanted to get rid of more of the oil wash on them than I did other parts. The other way in which I either remove the oil wash or kind of move it around, I wash off my brush in mineral spirits and then I load it up with mineral spirits and I reapply it over an area. And what this does is it floods the oil wash and pushes it further into the recesses and off of the larger, smoother areas. Those are kind of the two ways that I manipulate it and I move my oil wash around. Now, two things that I do 
that are probably wrong, that are different than a lot of other people I've seen, is number one, I'm not gloss varnishing this miniature before I apply the wash. I have a couple of reasons. Maybe they're flawed reasons, but here are most of my reasons. Number one, I'm not too worried about it being smooth and running into recesses because I really do want it all over, and that's one reason to gloss varnish. But the other reason is to protect the paint job underneath. Well, one of the things I really want is for this oil wash to stain and really make the colors underneath a lot grimier, and I think it does that better without the gloss varnish. The other thing that I do that is different is I'm not waiting a while for this to dry at all. I'm pretty much coming over right away and I'm picking it up, I'm moving it around, I'm not giving it a lot of time to sit there like a lot of people do. You watch a lot of videos that talk about that. So those are two things that I'm doing differently. One thing you have to be careful with when working with washes really in general, but especially how much I'm using here in this oil wash is watch out for pooling. Constantly come back to the mini and, and be cleaning up those areas because it's gonna move. Gravity's gonna take charge and it's gonna move it down and it's gonna wanna pool up in recesses and catch in places. So you gotta constantly be coming back and cleaning those out. So I'm doing things a little bit backwards and we're going to cover all the highlights for pretty much everything and then come back to the golden armor and show you how I went about highlighting up and what I did to really emphasize it. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, I really wanted to get all this stuff out of the way so I could focus my time and attention on the golden armor, but also on top of that. I wanted everything done, so as I'm painting the golden armor, I have a very clear picture of what the model's going to look like at the end. Obviously, I want this armor to be the focal point of what we're looking at with the model. So it allows me to look at it and go, this is what it's going to look like in the end. Am I happy with it? That way, I really am not worried about pushing all these other details. I'm happy with all these other things all the black and the silvers and you know the the wing motifs things like that those I'm, I'm satisfied with i want to be focusing on the gold armor and i want to make sure that it's what really sells the model not the other details once again as you see me painting all this gray onto our black you can tell that i'm not using a lot of paint on my brush i'm keeping it fairly small amounts of paint i'm unloading most of it onto my thumb before i put it onto the model and that allows me a lot of control and allows me to build up layers slowly it takes a lot more brush strokes to do that but it allows me to not make as many mistakes and not put paint where i don't want it to be but to control it a lot better
we're going to use this deck tan because it's a nice grayish off-white I don't know exactly what you describe it as I, I really think grayish off-white probably covers it and we don't want these wing insignias to sell as white we don't want them that bright because that would really take away from what we're doing and trying to make this a little bit darker and a little bit grittier so we're going to use this deck tan to give it a white like feel to maybe make it look like a white that's stained a little bit and then what i do is i take a little bit of that bright neutral gray which was our base color here and i'm going to apply that just to the brightest like tips of the wings or corners edges that are going to catch light and that's what i'm doing right here you can kind of see focusing it in very narrow areas and that's going to help sell it as white where when we get to the parchment you're going to see i use a totally different color to sell that as parchment For the laurel on his head, we're using the exact same color that we did the base with in this Arati green. Because the oil wash came over and it shaded it down, it darkened up our colors here, which is exactly what we wanted. So we're going to very slowly build back up this green color. Not all of it, maintaining those shadows, leaving it a little bit darker, but building up a lot of these edges and these ridges and these mid-tones back into our Arati green. We're then going to take our bright yellow green and really just focus on the tips. The yellow in this really helps to change the color and not just make it green to green. Um, and I think it sells it a lot better. It gives it some brightness and gives it some light. Once again, I say this every time I work with this color on a video. Be careful where you apply this. Use it sparingly, don't put it all over. All I'm doing is I'm putting it in the places where I want the metal to glint, where I want it to shine, where I'm imagining light's gonna reflect the most. I'm not building mid-tones here. I'm literally just focusing on those brightest highlights and I'm using it to mimic light. I'm using it to go, this is exactly where the light is shining on the miniature. I want to control where my reflections are. I want to control where my light is. And that's what I'm doing with this. If you overuse this, it, it looks cartoony and it really shows a transition between your dark aluminum and your silver. And we don't want that. One of the things I really wanted to do between the handle of the ax and his tabard, the outside of it, was to change the color so it didn't look like the red of his pauldron. I wanted it to look a little bit more like leather. I wanted it to be a little bit more unique and different and not just red. So we're using more of these burgundy colors to build it up and highlight it in order to give it more of a leather feel than just the red of his pauldron. I decided to try something completely new and instead of using an ivory like I would normally use to highlight this up, I grabbed my Mars orange and I just added it in there and started highlighting up with that. And I like that. It adds it a little bit more color. It makes it a little bit different. I don't know all the technical aspects of it, but I liked it. And I would encourage you as a painter, try new stuff. Challenge yourself, branch out. Don't just copy and paste what you see other people do. I know that's easy paint within the lines, things like that. 
but go ahead and take chances and you'll learn a lot from that. It'll really expand your knowledge, uh, but give you more confidence as well. And the best thing is even making mistakes while doing that, it's paint, paint right back over it. It's fine. Fix those mistakes. And even if you fail and it ends up being horrible, you've learned something and you've learned something valuable that you can take forward in the rest of your mini painting. Here you can see we used that deck tan for our wing motifs and now we're using our birch to sell our parchment. Different colors, they're going to give it a different feel. Once again, very little paint loaded on the brush. We're slowly shifting the color here. We're going to go into a white sands here in a minute for our brightest highlights, but we're going to take our time. We're not going to rush this. We're not going to try to highlight it in one go. A lot of mini strokes these are flat smooth areas it's very easy to make the transitions look bad and we want it to be smooth So here we are. This is obviously why everyone comes to watch a Commander Dante video. Maybe you just were on YouTube and you typed in how to paint Commander Dante. Maybe that's what you're looking for. And you've come across this video. This is the part. This is the money maker for the video. And I've decided to do this different than I've done gold ever before. I've never done it this way. And I really like the way that it came out. I'm using this white gold from Pro Acro. I love this color, but I don't often have a chance to use it a lot because it doesn't sell as silver. It looks very silvery here, but it's a very white color uh, rather than a silver color. And it has maybe a tint of yellow in it to really sell that gold. And so it was perfect here for a couple of reasons. Number one, it wasn't that really huge jump in brightness. And I needed that. I needed something that wasn't just going to be super reflective, but was going to help me shift the color. But I couldn't really just use a brighter gold because I want this gold to look a little bit more warm. So what it does is this white gold gives us reflections, gives us some highlights, but it also makes the armor look a little bit more burnished, a little bit more worn down and there's some more life to it it's not as shiny uh, it does provide highlights but it's not just glinting off it looks a little bit worn in those areas as i keep reiterating this is really not a lot of paint on my brush i'm using very light touches it took going over, say, that ab section, each of those ab muscles probably went over each one five or six times, maybe more, slowly adding it and, and really shortening my strokes so that they were landing in the, the brightest highlights and only there at the end. Obviously, I'm not going to show that on the video because that would be tedious, but understand that this isn't necessarily a quick process. I took my time with it and I wanted it to look right.
This was easily my favorite process in the entire model. Taking the sepia ink, and what we're gonna use this as is not just like a shade, but really a color shifter and, and a, a deep shade all at the same time for this model. Once again, just like our white gold, this is gonna take multiple layers. We're gonna wait for each one to dry in between before we come over and we're shifting the color of our gold. We're not just adding in shadows, but we're literally taking it from our mid-tone that we've done with the airbrush and we've done with the oil wash and bringing it into a much deeper gold. And it's really cool the way that this is gonna work. Once again, like over each of these ab muscles or in our leg area is we're gonna paint over it and it, sh it shifts that color a little bit. But then once that dries, we're gonna come back over again. And every time we come back over, we're pushing the paint into the recesses and we're shifting that color deeper and deeper. And it's a really, it's a glaze. It's a fun way to glaze. And it's been a really fun, interesting experience to do this with the gold. Finally, we're gonna take a pure violet ink wash and we're only going to put this in our deepest sections where we want really our darkest shadows to be. You don't wanna put this everywhere because this will deepen it tremendously. And if you put it in areas where it shouldn't be the deepest shadow, you'll see that purple really shine through and it won't look good. It, it will really tint the gold and it doesn't look the way that you want it to. So keep it only in those really deep shadows. We want to tint that, that dark sepia color we've already built up there and tint it a little bit darker. Like here on the feet, his body's blocking the light from coming down. So we want to add those deeper shadows in. That color shift into purple is going to read as a much deeper shadow than our sepia ink. Be very selective because this is powerful, but it will make a massive change to this paint job. For our right pauldron, all we're going to do, we're not going to highlight it at all. We're simply going to take this burnt red, we're going to dilute it into a wash, and we're going to do 
five, six, seven, eight, however many washes it takes, letting each one dry, pushing shadows into this. It's gonna be very subtle and that's our goal. We want it to be subtle. Towards the deepest shades, I'm gonna add just a little bit of black into it to make it that much deeper. I really debated as to whether or not I even wanted to do this. The whole paint job, I kept debating back and forth. Reason number one why I didn't want to is the reality is in the natural world, verdigris does not show up on gold. It, it doesn't have that. It doesn't tint that way. It's not the way it works. Now, if your gold has some copper or some zinc, something like that mixed in, then it might because of those elements being found in it. But pure gold, doesn't and as we know commander dante's armor is gold his death mask is described as a golden helm so i really debated i said i don't know if i want to do that and then i was just simply nervous about i don't want to ruin a paint job that i like that i've, I've really fallen in love with ultimately though i decided let's do it his, his armor is looking a little more coppery has a little bit more bronze feel than it does gold so i feel like it fits the look even though it may not fit the idea of gold but also we want grim dark we want something a little bit dirtier this adds it takes away a little bit of the shine makes it a little bit more interesting we were very light-handed i was very light-handed with how i put the verdigris on some of that was probably nerves i didn't want to ruin the paint job but i like the way that it ended up and i'm glad i took the chance and decided to do it it's subtle and that's the way I want it to be. Once again, it doesn't make sense in the real world, but this isn't the real world. So here we have it. Grimdark, Commander Dante in all of his glory. I hope that I have captured that mix of grimdark feel while also getting the majesty of the leader of the blood angels in the 40k universe i hope that was as much fun for you to watch and experience as it was for me to actually sit down and paint it this was a paint job that i really had to just set aside at some point and call him done because i could have spent forever on this one model man i had a lot of fun doing stuff that i've never done before a lot of what i was doing with him whether it was the oil washes, the way I did the gold with not actually doing a gold, whether it was the, the light touches and the small loads of paint on my paintbrush. It was just not my normal style. I was really branching out, trying to do something different. I felt like I needed to do something different in order to get that grimdark feel mixed with the classic Commander Dante. He's supposed to be this iconic, beautiful, majestic, 
awe-inspiring character within the, not just the Blood Angels, but really the larger Space Marines as a whole. And I really, I wanted to capture those things and I knew I needed to branch out. I knew I needed to challenge myself on this. And man, I just, I loved doing this. I thought this was so much fun. We really could have gone further with the Grimdark had we wanted to. We really could have worked to create even more contrast within this model had we wanted to. But really where it's at, I love it. I've had so much fun with it. You guys would. I would really appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button, if you would hit that like button, if you drop a comment on this one. Maybe this is a first time video for you. If you go and check out some of my other videos, that would be absolutely huge. Thank you guys for watching. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Please let me know what you thought of this paint job, what you thought of these techniques, things that I could improve on, video ideas, whatever you could possibly have. Let me know in the comment section. I would love to talk to you guys. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.